I'm just going to try to go over uh, five new things um, that you might not know about Starship. Uh, as Adrian mentioned, I'm Matt St. John. I'm the sales executive for the Sage interfaces here at V Technologies. Um, so, you know, just have a slideshow. We'll go over first, kind of review those five new things. And then I'll jump into a quick demo and kind of show you how you can use some of these things and how they can work for you. Okay. So first off, uh, with our interfaces, uh, Starship actually now has two different interfaces that you can use with, this, with the Sage um, product line. Uh, we have our business object interface. Um, so with our business object interface, uh, that will allow your shippers to ship directly from Starship. Um, they will not need access into Sage. Uh, so this option is good. You know, maybe if you're running out of licenses for Sage, um, you know, you can free up some by having your shippers use the business object interface. Um, and then with the business object interface, there's kind of two advantages over the Starship link is that with our business object interface, uh, we can do batch processing. Um, so you can literally select X amount of orders and a couple clicks on the mouse button actually have all your shipping documents, labels, print out for all the orders that you select. And then also with the BOI is uh, the ability to consolidate multiple orders into one shipment. So your shippers will be able to see that, hey, I'm shipping this one shipment to company ABC. Um, oh, look, I also have four other orders going to the same company. And it will allow them to actually select them all put them all together into one order um, in one shipment. It's going to save time and money um, you know, for the shipping department. And then uh, our other interface is the Starship link. Uh, so newer, newer uh, Starship users probably aren't using the link interface, um, our original interface that we developed with Sage. But a new feature, if you're using the Starship link, is now your shippers will have the ability to modify item package packaging details. Excuse me. Um, in the past, uh, with shipping data uh, Starship link, I would go into Sage, go into shipping data entry. That's where I would define what shipping. I would have to do my packaging detail in there, and then click the Starship button, which would pass that information into Starship. Um, and then once it was passed into Starship the shippers could not modify it. They couldn't say, you know, oh, I want this item in box one and I need this item in box two. Um, actually, now we have changed that and your shippers will actually have the ability to modify that item packaging detail. So they can bring in that order and then just, you know, add packages, drag and drop the items um, to do the packaging detail. And then we have, I should say, uh, kind of a third interface uh, that's new is our Amazon interface. Um, so with the Amazon interface, uh, that's going to allow um, Starship to retrieve and update orders directly from the Amazon marketplace. Shipper can then ship, ship and process, and it will push all the shipping information back up to the Amazon marketplace. Um, we also have an Amazon interface extension. And you can use that if you're currently getting your Amazon orders into Sage. Okay, so order information is going to go from Amazon. It's going to be brought into Sage. And then from there, Starship can grab that information where you can ship and process your order. And Starship will actually pass the shipping information back to Sage and Amazon. A different, couple different options there. Okay. Uh, new features with carriers. We actually now have over two dozen carrier connections or modules. Uh, we just recently added Adewey Pile, Avrid Express, and Holland. Uh, if you're unaware, you know, with a carrier connection or module, uh, that gives your shippers the ability to actually electronic, electronically rate shop or use any other electronic feature the carrier may offer such as electronic tendering. Nice thing with that, you know, you no longer have to call the carrier or go to their website to find out how much your shipment's going to cost you or to let the carrier know that you have a shipment ready to be picked up. Okay. Next is our USPS module. Uh, so as soon as you 
purchase our USPS module, you will gain access to discounted rates on your priority shipments. Uh, so, you know, anything less than 20 pounds and 0.5 cubic feet, uh, you will gain some nice discounted rates with that. Also with USPS, uh, we also do the USPS takes last mile. So in, co in combination with UPS Mail Innovations, UPS SurePost, FedEx Smart Post, DHL Global Mail, there's a couple more. Um, you know, you could actually send your package out, say FedEx, but USPS will actually end up delivering it. And then also with USPS, uh, the return labels. They, um, in the past, used to be charged for every time you print, printed one out. And now with the return labels, you will only be charged for when they are scanned or when, you know, when your customer actually uses them to return something back to you. Uh, so you could technically include a return label with every shipment and you know, only be charged for when actually something is sent back to you. And also with our USPS module, um, we have the Indicio Global Service. And this is going to offer you some low-cost uh, low alternative for Latin American America shipments. Um, you know, some of those, you get same-day custom clearance, end-to-end uh, -end tracking, and again, um, you know, it's a really cost-effective way to ship to, say, Brazil and Mexico. All right. Also, let's see, with our ship via rules. Uh, so inside Starship, you can set up ship via rules to have Starship automatically select your carrier service based off your rule. Um, you know, we have some clients that just have a ship via called Best Way, and what that will do, it triggers a ship via rule to, you know, take place. Um, you know, and they might have it set up, hey, automatically select the carrier that's going to get my package to its final destination, least amount of time, or most popular, least amount of expense. Um, so again, set up a ship via rule, and Starship can automatically create or select that carrier and service based off that rule. Some of our third-party integration. Um, not only does Starship integrate with Sage, we do also integrate with some other third-party software companies. Um, you know, if you're currently using or have the need for, say, a pick pack solution, a scanning solution, uh, an EDI solution, or an e-commerce solution, um, as you can see down below here, these are the companies that we integrate with. Pretty much just a plug-and-play integration with them. Um, so again, you know, if something you're thinking about or currently using, definitely reach out to us. Let us know. I give you more information uh, about how easy it is we can integrate with these solutions. All right. So Starship not only is it going to help in the warehouse. Um, I'm sure you're aware of that, but just in case you're not aware, it can also help your front office. Um, you know, with Starship, we do give you tools for the front office. Uh, these are included. Um, this one here, Rate Shop from Sales Order Entry. Uh, if you're currently, you have Starship, you're on Sage version 4.5 or higher, uh, you have access to this. Um, you know, there's no extra fee, no extra maintenance fee on this. Um, nice thing with rate shopping here, it doesn't require any additional seats or licenses for Starship. And what Rate Shop's going to do, we just add a little Rate Shop button here inside Sales Order Entry. Uh, so it's going to allow your customer service or sales rep to actually Rate Shop right from Sales Order. Um, so this will work for standard orders or if we're doing a quote, all they have to do is click the Rate Shop button. So it'll be brought into our Rate Quote screen here. And from there, they have the ability to Rate Shop. Uh, so they can click the rate button. What that will do is we'll show them, in this case, as you can see here, um, for UPS. It's just going to show them all the options for UPS. Uh, this carrier service is being mapped from the ship via. But if we click rate shop, uh, that's actually going to go out and show me all the rates for all the carriers that I have modules with. So if I had UPS, FedEx, USPS, um, you know, maybe Averett, maybe I had a couple of LTL carriers. I could actually just click Rate Shop, and I'd be able to see uh, list pricing. So that's published rates. If it was for an LTL carrier, it would be zero because they don't offer published rates. Um, going to be able to see my contract rate. So that's my live negotiated rate with the carrier. And then we also add an applied column. Uh, applied is plus or minus any freight rules. 
Uh, you can base those off the list or contract price. Um, as you can see here, I have a $10 handling fee that just goes on top of the list price. Um, so customer service sales reps, they can take those into consideration. You know, maybe we offer free freight over $200. Uh, they would be able to see that you know, just by clicking the rate quote button. Also from here, they can do packaging um, or they can see how packaging is might be sent. Um, you know, usually packaging isn't determined until time of shipment. But inside Starship, if you, if you have packaging scenarios set up, uh, they could actually see that. As you can see here, I have three items on this order. There's a packaging scenario for one of the items, so it automatically put it in a large box. You know, this is a custom box that I set up. Nice thing with using custom boxes is that it will automatically populate the dimension fields. Um, you know, that, that helps the shippers when they're shipping. Uh, one less thing they have to enter. So they do have the ability to kind of build packaging if they'd like, or you know, if I had packaging scenarios set up, I could see that hey, this should go in two boxes. One's going to go in a large box and two of the items you're just going to go in a standard custom box. And then also from here, you could have the front office do uh, address validation. You know, of course, Starship does it at time of shipment, uh, but you can do it ahead of time. Uh, Starship validates ZIP plus four. We do use UPS, USPS, and FedEx's web services to make sure the address is valid. And this will automatically correct that residential commercial flag fee as well. And then also another tool that is included with Starship and doesn't affect licenses is our dashboard. Um, you know, dashboard's a reporting tool that you can use to, um, oops, for the front office, we can run reports. Um, we have some apply versus contract reports, late delivery report. And I'll jump into that in the demo. I'll show you that so you can see how that would work. Another tool that's included with Starship, <clears throat> excuse me, is our branded email or e-notification program. Um, so here's just an example of a, a standard UPS ship notification, their quantum view. Um, but with our branded email, it's going to allow you to create your own templates. Um, you know, add your logo, build your brand awareness. Um, you know, you can put in coupon codes, hyperlink customers right back to your website. And again, that's included with Starship. Um, and I'll show you that again in, during the demo. So if you're not using it, you know, definitely you can see how it can work for you. All right. So let me close out of this and I'll jump into Starship. So I'm just going to be using that BOI interface. So I'm going to just be shipping right from Starship. I'll kind of explain that if you're, you know, if you're interested in seeing it. Um, so with BOI, I'm going to have my choice to select my source document. I can pull by sales order, customer, or by invoice number. Most clients use sales order numbers. Um, I could manually type this in. If my pick sheets had the sales order number barcoded, I could scan it with just a regular wedge type scanner. I could use the lookup feature here. And with the lookup, this is where I could do batch processing. So I could apply a filter and only you know, see certain orders if I wanted to. But again, I can select as many orders as I like and then be able to process all those orders. Um, you know, again, I might select 100 orders, just pr uh, process them, and I'm just going to start automatically getting my shipping documents labels for each, each order. Okay. So I'm just going to manually type in an order here. Okay. Just bear with me. My system's been slow today. I can speed it up. But, um, again, I'm just going to type in sales order number or scan it or look it up. Okay. And so Starship just went out. It grabbed the order information from Sage and just brought it into Starship. Okay. You know, ship via, that's going to work the same. It's mapping from the ship via. So it selected my carrier and service. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, sender is the center company I'm in inside of Sage. And recipients coming from the ship the uh, ship to on the order. Okay. But down here in our packaging view is where my box and item detail lives. So this is all the items on the box. As you can see here, this one item, I had a packaging scenario set up, so it automatically packed it in my medium box. And then on here, if I click on the line item detail, I can do my units on shipment. So maybe if I was back ordering something, I could back order it. 
with BOI, it is automatically going to create the invoice inside of Sage for your front office. Um, and anything that I back order, it will back order the sales order as well back as well as back order the invoice. Okay. And you know, maybe I wanted to add another box here. I can simply just click add a box. And then let me just expand all these. And then I can simply drag and drop my items into my box or I can even do multiple box selection if I want or multiple item selection um, and drag those items into my box okay um, so we have the packaging view we also give you the option to use our shipping assistant wizard um, so I'm just going to click this little uh, wand icon up top here and this is just another way I can do my packaging um, you know, some clients their shippers find this easier if you do, you know, we can turn it on so that as soon as I tab out of the sales order screen or field, it will populate this the screen here. Okay. So first screen is just showing me my order detail. As you can see here on the left hand side is related orders. So this is where I can consolidate orders. Um, you know, all these orders are going to the same ship too. So I could select them and you know bring them all up, select a couple. I also have the option to manually add orders to consolidate. Okay. My next screen, this is where I'm going to do uh, units on shipment. So I can back order items. I'm going to click next. And then I have the options to do my packaging. Um, and I already built this package, but you could have your items just come in as loose items. Then they would be listed up here. And then same thing, simply drag and drop. Down below I can add, remove boxes. Uh, you know, I can select my custom boxes from here. And then if this was an LTL shipment, I could click next, this would be green, and then I could actually do my box to pallet. I could build my pallets with my boxes. Okay. And then, you know, however I set it up, once I click finish, it's going to bring me back into Starship, back in the, you know, my packaging view. Um, you know, from here, oh, actually one thing I wanted to mention, item to box detail is not required for your shipments in Starship. Know, you might say have an order that has maybe a hundred line items on it and you know maybe you just want to get it out you don't want to have to put each item in its correct box um, so you could just leave all the items in you know say a custom box and then we actually add a repeat box function here um, so you can tell it you know hey I need to add you know in this case I'll add two more boxes so I'll have a total of four I just click OK and then it automatically puts those boxes in there for me and then I can, you know, if I have a scale, just put the box on the scale and we'll grab the scale weight or manually type it in. Okay. So again, that item to box detail is not required. Again, in some cases you might want to save time and just leave all the items in one box. All right. So everything else, you know, is going to be same if you're used to using the link. Now I'm inside Starship. Uh, you know, I can rate shop. Here's the little shortcut icon for rate shopping. Again, just going out, it's pulling in my contract rate, my list rates for all the carriers that I have modules with. As you can see here, you know, I can change. Maybe I want this to go three day. All right. Kind of all that functionality is going to be the same. Charges tab is going to show me the breakdown of charges. If I had freight rules set up, you know, here I just have a UDF field. That's just a checkbox called freight discount. So this customer receives 25% discount on freight. Um, well, and then with Starship, um, if you're not aware, you can actually save shipments. Uh, maybe you're sa uh, staging a shipment. Uh, maybe you have one that a couple items aren't quite ready yet. So you can start the process, save it, and then come back to it later and finish it up. But in this case, I'm just going to ship and process this order. Okay, just ship and process. Normal function here. I'm going to get my shipping documents. And Starship is going to just update. Uh, stage, like I said, it creates the invoice. So here's just my shipping. This is just a, what we call our smart label. I just use it so for my demo, so you can actually see a shipping label in the packaging list. But the smart label, that's what it does. It prints the shipping label and packaging list together on an eight half by eleven piece of paper. Actually, another feature of Starship is the packaging list. Now you can send that to a thermal printer, um, so you can have your shipping label go to a thermal printer. And then the second label would be the packaging list. Uh, shipper could just tear that off and toss it inside the box. Uh, 
save some time there as well. Okay, ship label for my second box. All right, and then like I said, I'll go into invoice data entry here. Go to my last invoice. So uh, as you can see, sales order 224. This is the one we just shipped. So Starship had to create the invoice, and of course, on the invoice, my tracking information right in the summary package tracking table. Okay, I could track using the Sage package tracking button here. And then also on the totals tab, it writes back the freight amount. Okay, so invoice is created. And then let me show you the e-notification. I just have to log back in here. Uh, let's just log in. So this is the email viewer. Uh, again, this can be installed on as many workstations as you like. Uh, so let me just go to pending here. All right, let's make this full size here. So here's just a quick template I designed. Um, like I said, build your brand awareness, put your company logo on there. Uh, but easily design a template that's going to let your customer know, hey, shipment's on its way. You know, you can easily add in stage fields like PO number, the sales order number. Now, if you wanted to, let them know how it was being shipped, the service type, where it's going to, give them package breakdown, estimated delivery date. That is coming from the carrier, so it is accurate. Uh, again, package breakdown with that line item detail. Uh, and then the tracking numbers are hyperlinked, so these will help cut down those inbound calls of, hey, where's my package? You know, now they can just go out, in this case, to UPS's website and track the package. And as I mentioned, you know, you can add shipping codes, hyperlink them, get the customer right back to your website. Um, you can add, um, with these, set up multiple templates. Maybe you wanted a template with um, a coupon code. And then with each of these, you can actually set up sending rules. So maybe I only want this coupon code to template to go to certain customers. I can create a condition on this template that it only goes to those certain customers. Another question I get a lot with these is the email addresses. Um, these can be pulled from or passed from Sage into Starship, so we could actually get from the customer maintenance record, um, sales order record, uh, the where you set up your sales reps. Uh, there's a spot for an email address. You can include that. Um, I even have clients that they need to send the email to, say, five different email addresses. Uh, what you can do in that case is just create a UDF field you know, again, customer maintenance screen, sales order screen. Just list those email addresses, add that UDF field into this template, and it will send all the emails, you know, grab those email addresses, and this template would go to those email addresses. Another thing with these, one thing I do suggest, if you want to use eNotify, um, you can still use the, in this case, you know, for UPS, the quantum view. You can still use your carrier generated email. Uh, just one suggestion, and we can automate this for you. You know, have it automatically selected. I'm just going to go and add additional settings here. We again link in email addresses automatically. Uh, but I would I would use the email generated by the carrier for exceptions. Uh, again, we can set this up so it's automatically selected. So that way, your customer is going to receive the email from you saying, "Hey, shipment's on its way. Here's your shipment information." And then if there's any delay, you know, anything happens, snowstorm coming, um, package gets delayed, they would receive an email from the carrier that says, hey, it was supposed to be there you know, Monday, but it's going to be Wednesday. Um, again, just another way to help cut down those calls of, you know, where's my package? Uh, so you can use those hand in hand. Okay. And each of these templates can be sent, you know, it's up to you. You can send them as soon as your shippers click ship and process. You can delay them by a certain number of hours and or minutes. Uh, you can send them all at the end of the day at, say, like 7 o'clock. You can set that up. Or, you know, you can come in through email viewer here and actually, you know, select them. I can forward, delete, or send them right from here. Okay. Oh, and dashboard. Okay. So, again, you know, E-Notify, Dashboard, the rate quoting, as long as you have uh, version, Sage version 4.5 and higher, again, you have access to this. Um, you know, if you don't see it on there, definitely reach out to us, let us know, and we can get you over the links to get all this installed. Um, 
But again, with dashboard, just a reporting tool that my front office management can use. Um, you know, I just have right now. I have some performance indicators up here. You know, if I wanted to quickly see the chart of my top five customers, and this is actually by shipments, I can see that um, shipment by user. One thing I want to mention is with Starship, you can set up users and then have security features for each user. Um, I find a lot of clients, they're just using the default login for admin. And then I show them this, and they're like, oh, that's great. Let me go look, and oh, I, everyone's logged in as admin. Um, but you can set up separate users. And again, inside Starship, different security features for each of those users. Um, and then from dashboard, you can you know, kind of track and see who's shipping what. Uh, so shipment by carrier. Maybe you want to negotiate better rates. You can quickly see, hey, you know, UPS doing almost three quarters of my shipments through you. How about some better rates? And then nice thing with these little widgets here, you can click on them, drill down further. Uh, so if I wanted to see the eight shipments that make up ABF, I can click here and actually see that. Um, you can track from dashboard. Uh, if I was needed to track from dashboard, the screen coming up is what I would see. So I could have access to the shipping information. You know, I can see shipping date, estimated delivery date, the status of it. You know, packaging breakdown. My customer calls. Oh, you know, you're getting two packages, and in box one you should have had this item. You know, box two I can see the other item. Information all the way down to proof of delivery. If it was required and the carrier supports it, you could actually see the signature. And some other can reports. Let's see. A um, couple that I recommend. Uh, the late delivery report. You can run that. That's going to go out. It's going to compare the actual delivery date to the guaranteed delivery date. Uh, I was going to let you know of any package that wasn't delivered on time. So you can contact the carrier and try to get a refund. And the other one is the shipment charge comparison. So this report is going to go. It's going to compare the applied, and that is what you charge the customer for your shipment or for their shipment, versus the contract, and that's what the carrier is going to charge you. Okay. So that way you can run this report easily. See, you know, make sure you're at least breaking even. Definitely going to let you know the ones you lost money on. Uh, in that report, you'll we give you the sales order number, so you can go back in the sage. You know, maybe you lost money. Um, you can go back and look, and you know, see see what happened, why you lost money. Um, and then there's just a list versus contract. You know, it's a nice report you can run, and that's going to show published rates versus your contract rates. So again, you know, maybe you want to negotiate better rates. You know, you, you have quick access to that and try to get better discounts. Okay. Um, and then also from dashboard, you can use the rate shop or rate quote. Um, we have that in dashboard. We also have it as a standalone module. So again, you could do rate shopping from any machine. You know, you don't need Sage installed uh, with rate quoting. Um, just with when I'm using it as a standalone or through dashboard, I do manually have to enter. You know, probably zip code. Definitely at least the zip code. I mean, you can do address. Um, you know, carrier. And if I'm doing package breakdown, I would have to you know tell it oh three boxes that each weigh ten pounds. Um, you know, nice thing when it comes from sales order entry, it automatically populates that information. Um, but as a standalone, you do have to manually fill that out, but you do have the, uh, that option to use it. All right, and uh, that's what I have for you today. Um, again, just thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join our webinar and uh, probably answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Matt. That was a great presentation. Thank you. Um, I do have some polls I'd like to launch at this time. If I could ask the audience to just quickly answer this first poll here. How would you rate your experience with Starship? If you could just on a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being best, if you could uh, answer this question, it would be helpful for us to continuously improve. And we do have a couple questions, Matt. I'm going to announce them while this poll is launched. 
Can we get a recording of this? Kenny, yes, I am recording this webinar and I will be sending out a follow-up email to everyone who's registered, including the attendees as well, of the recording and all of Matt's contact information. So thank you for that question. And uh, what version were we looking at? Thank you, Jim. Matt, could you? Sure. Uh, the version of Starship is actually our latest release. It is 16.1. Uh, and then I think my Sage is only 2014, if you were wondering about Sage. But Starship is our latest release of 16.1. And we have another question from Erwin. Thank you, Erwin. How does API work with BIN? Um, Some multi-BIN, maybe? Yeah, I'm wondering if it's multi-BIN, BIN, location. Uh, Erwin, could you possibly yeah. elaborate on that one? I'm going to announce the, the next question while, you, uh, while we receive some feedback from Erwin. The browser I noticed was Internet Explorer. Does the functionality work seamlessly with Google Chrome? Thank you, Michael. Okay. Um, <laughs> good question. Yeah, as you can see, I had my dashboard running off Internet Explorer, and I had the e-notify link to Google Chrome. Um, I This is a virtual machine. I really haven't updated anything. I did run into a problem with dashboard running on Google Chrome, um, but I checked with support and it's not a known issue, so I don't know if it's something with my virtual machine. Um, it just, dashboard uses, it needs uh, Silverlight to run, and for some reason when I try to run it through Chrome, it's not seeing that I have the latest version of Silverlight. Um, again, you know, I check with support, it's not a known issue. Um, it just might be something with my virtual machine, but you know, either way, you can run them on Chrome or Internet Explorer. And I see that 94% of you have voted. Thank you so much for taking the time out to vote. I'm going to close that poll and I'm going to open up one more poll or two more polls here. Um, if you could just take a second to answer this, um, that would be very helpful. Which interface are you using? the business object interface or just the Starship link? And I see 59% of you have voted. And I'm thinking that um, some of you may not be Starship customers and we're hopeful that you become Starship customers. So I'm going to go ahead and close this poll and open up a new one. If you could just take this last poll, it would be very, very helpful. Are you interested in learning more? Yes or not at this time? And I still haven't received an elaboration. Oh. Looks like we have multiple more questions, and I just needed to move my um, mouse down. So sorry for that. Jim, thank you so much for this question. How do we add the button to the sales order screen? Okay. Um, it's just a quick installer. Um, usually we don't – and I'm sorry, let me start over. A quick installer that needs to run on the, your Sage server. Um, so I can get you over the install link. You know, just reach out to us. Let me know. Um, we usually don't do it because it, it involves, you know, Sage. So we either have to tell your reseller to do it or have you do it. Uh, honestly, it is a quick install. You know, you just it's just an installer link I'll send you, and it's just a quick install, um, and it will add that button. Again, Sage version 4.5 and higher. And Erwin has elaborated on that earlier yeah. question. He is referring to multi-bin. Yes. Um, so the BOI interface does work with multi-bin, um, you know, and there's, or when I, I can send you, um, grab your email address, I can send you a description of how exactly it works. Uh, there's a couple different ways, um, you know, it's going to handle your lot serial, um, it will all allocate items from inventory in real time with uh, multi-bin. So I can definitely send you over that, that sheet that kind of um, reviews, you know, the features of Starship with multi-bin. 
And is the packaging options you showed only in the BOI version? Thank you, Kenny. Yes, Kenny. Um, unfortunately, because with Link, um, you know, that information is coming from Sage's packaging tables. So you're, you're telling it, hey, I'm putting this in box one, I'm putting this in box two, or I'm just, you know, sending it all over in box one. So those packaging scenarios can't override that. Um, again, what you can do is modify, you know, you can rename, um, let me just quickly pull in a, pot, a box here, or an order. Um, so I could push that order information. And let, me let me close this uh, poll out if you're showing us something, Matt. Hang on, oh, they're, they're sure. just looking at a poll right now. Oh, sorry about so, that. Let's look at your screen and go ahead. Okay. Um, so actually, bad example here, but let me put this. Um, so from the link, um, I would be in shipping data entry, um, and if I just either clicked our quick ship button, it would bring in, come on, bear with me here, get rid of this box. Um, it would bring in my items just into one custom box. Um, so again, I can't do those packaging scenarios, but what I can do is add a box or rename, you know, this custom box, maybe this I want to be my large box, and then I'll take uh, these two items, put them in my second box, you know, maybe this is a, a medium box. Um, so unfortunately, with, uh, box. with the link, um, you cannot have packaging scenarios come into play. And again, it's just the way that Sage handles putting the package, I call it package numbers, in their tables. And we do have a question from Brian. Brian, thank you for your question. I missed the first 30 minutes. Can I get a recording of this? Yes, I am recording this webinar, and everyone will automatically receive the recording along with Matt's contact information. And I'm sure Matt would love to hear from you. So yeah. if you have any questions, yeah, please give please. him a call. And um, Erwin, thanks for the reply. Um, er Erwin is um, thanking you, Matt. So yeah. okay. with, that, yeah. with all that said, I don't think we have any more questions. I just wanted to remind the audience that there is a question mark and a hand next to your name on the webinar pane. If you have a question, go ahead and um, click the question mark button, not the hand button, but the question mark button, and indicate your question via text, and I will announce your question. Uh, we've been having some audio issues with the hand, so unmuting people, sometimes they don't have their mic on, um, so we would prefer to get those questions via text, that would be great, um, by clicking that question mark button, and I'm not seeing any more questions, oh, I'm seeing oh, yeah, several questions, just, yeah. there we go, <laughs> um, not a Starship user, question, have someone call me. Of course, Sam. Thank you so much. <laughs> we will definitely Great. reach out to you. <laughs> Great demo. Thanks for the webinar, Erwin. Thank you for that. And if we are using the link now, how much is it to get the BOI? Good question, Kenny. Okay. So the BOI interface, if you would like to purchase it, um, is, uh, let me see, make sure we didn't change pricing, um, $1,500, because it is a brand new interface. Um, if you do purchase the BOI and have the link, you can actually run both. Um, best way to do it is create different users, and it would be by the user login. So if you wanted to, you could have some users using BOI and some users still using the link. And Matt, um, what kind of support comes with that when you become a Starship cu customer? Okay, um, we do have support. Uh, nice thing here, everything is in-house. So my support team is right down the hall. Um, you know, we have um, uh, phone support. You can send us an email, um, and you know, if you call in, support will remote in with you. Um, you know, take a look at the issue. Most of the time, they don't even need to ro remote in. Um, you know, they can talk you through things. Um, but we do have a full support department right here down the hall from me. 
So perfect. Well, I don't see any. Let me just take another look yeah. here. Oh, yep. <laughs> Added a couple more. My my screen. I'm using a Mac, so um, let's see. It's a little condensed here. Um, easiest way to put 1,000 same items in 50 boxes. So thank you, S J. Um, Matt, what's the easiest way to put 1,000 of the same items in 50 boxes? Um. So we could. A couple different ways. Um, again, with packaging scenarios, we could, you know, kind of tell Starship that, hey, when I have this item, um, with those packaging scenarios, it's not always one to one. I can say, you know, maximum 25 um, go into one box. So again, with packaging scenarios, it automatically pull it in. It see, I'd have a thousand. So we do the math and put each, you know, each set into into the 50 boxes. Um, you could also, um, on my screen here, uh, do I have uh, with this, um, let's see, again, we can use the repeat box function. And then you can, when I highlight something and hold control and move it into the box, here's where I can, you know, divide up my orders. Um, so I could say, you know, 10 in this box, 10 in this box, and do that. or in, it might even be easier again just using the shipping assistant wizard. Um, I could come here, select my item, and then here's where I can tell it to pack. You know, well, actually, this has already been packaged, um, but here it would become available, and I can say, okay, put 10 in this box, add my next box, and then do the same thing. So you could have the same line item and you know, split it apart, either you know, through packaging view or through the shipping assistant wizard. And Jim has another question. Thank you, Jim. There is an undocumented feature for adding any field you want to write back to Sage. Is that still in version 16.1, and can we get documentation for it? Yes. Uh, yep. The custom write back, uh, custom write back executable uh, is what Jim is referring to. Um, so with BOI, kind of another feature over link. Uh, we do have an executable where you can write script that basically tells Starship where to pass information back into Sage. Um, if you noticed on my invoice, um, oops, kind of for example, um, how some clients use that custom write back. I had on the totals tab this contract charge. This is actually just a UDF field that I added. Um, so some clients, regardless of the freight amount, they want to know what they're being charged. And yes, you can use dashboard for that. Uh, but some clients just want to be able to run everything right, you know, reports and have all that information live inside of Sage. Um, so what they'll do is, regardless of the freight amount, they're always pushing back the contract charge into into uh, Sage, and then they run reports from there. Um, Jim, we can, I can definitely get you the documentation for that. Um, but yes, it is still available. And I'm not seeing any further question. Oh, Jim says marvelous. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions at this time. And I, we just appreciate, it looks like we're 13 minutes ahead of schedule. So good job, Matt. Yeah, and thank you thanks everybody for your <laughs> engagement. Um, and Matt will be following up with you personally. And I will send out a, a follow-up email to everyone on the line with uh, Matt's contact information and recording. And uh, we just appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, Matt, would you, do you have any closing remarks? Um, no, just again, you know, thank everyone for taking time out of your day. I know everyone's busy and hours a lot. Uh, I try to cut it down. And, uh, you know, any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you know, one thing I always recommend, have your shippers, um, you know, either keep an Excel spreadsheet, Word document, or a pad piece of paper next to their shipping station. And jot down anything that they might manually be doing. Um, you know, if there's a field they're manually filling out, um, just take note and then let me know because nine times out of ten, um, there's a way we can automate it. Um, and you know, that's what I find a lot with shippers. Hey, I'm always doing this. Can I? Can I? Can that be automated? And um, usually the answer is yes. So feel free, let me know. And again, thank you, and uh, hope everyone enjoys their weekend soon to be. Ah, I can't wait. <laughs> All right, everybody, uh, take care. Have a great day. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.